So Cliff, Cal, what did you think? So before I saw this film, I was really looking forward to it because I like the concept of films with animals with no dialogue and kind of almost the spiritual um, exploration of just watching an animal being itself, you know, just just the beingness of, of animals, I think is really um, an interesting topic for films. And it always makes me go back to Oh Hazar Balthazar with the amazing donkey in that film that represents so much. But a lot of the time, we're just seeing Balthazar being, and it's a really beautiful film. And I think that was one of the first films where I really appreciated how interesting I find it seeing um, animals in, in films where they're just allowed to be, you know, they're, they're not performing or... Um, and so I really had very high expectations of this film. I also recently watched uh, Gunda, the Viktor Kosakovsky film um, from which is recent as well, isn't it? And obviously that there are big similarities between Cow and Gunda in the sense that there's no dialogue in the films and it's just filming animals. Um, so it's quite quite interesting because there are big similarities, but they are very different films. Um, now, <sighs> Cow, I think took me a little bit by surprise because Cow doesn't, for me, doesn't go down the route at the start of, you know, for a good proportion of the film, it doesn't go down the route of allowing the animals to be. We're straight away, we open with a birth, which you know, it's, it's not like a traumatic scene, but it is, a, it's, it's, you know, obviously it is a live birth and we're seeing the calf coming out and, um, so we're straight away into a, a kind of moment. It's not just being, it's actually a, a major event, um, you know, which is almost trauma um, and definitely not kind of poetic in any, in any way. And as this film went on, I, re I realised, I, I had the feeling that she wasn't interested in poetry here. She wasn't interested in the being of the animals, that actually this is a true documentary in the sense of that this is documenting an industry. This is a film about the milk industry, but it's a very clever film. It's not, there's no lecturing, there's no, I mean, it is quite literal at times. It shows you very literal things, which clearly for me are making quite strong ethical and political points. But it never, it, it, it doesn't state any opinions, it doesn't lecture us. And I found that really as a documentary, documenting the milk industry and the absurdities and of it, um, and the, the kind of ethical questions that it raises, definitely, it, for me, there are ethical questions there. And I, I don't drink milk, but I do eat cheese. So, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm complicit and I eat meat as well. So I'm complicit in, in the ethics of this. Um, and I, and I just thought that was, that was fascinating. And I, I found myself feeling just how absurd it is when the, the staff would be really friendly with the cows, like often referring to them as girls or you know, to the baby, to the calf as calling it baby. You know, obviously they name this cow Luma. Um, it's, there's an absurdity in that when you see actually what happens to the cows because they're not really friends with the cows. They're friendly, I guess, but they're not really friends because actually, you know, the, there are horrible things happening here like mother and child being split up you know, for the purpose. And, and another absurdity was, you know, watching the calf being give, fed milk out of a bottle while the, it's true, it's it, the milk that it should be having is being, you know, sold for industrial purposes. And 
And so I, th I think it was just really effective as, um, you know, a film that left you feeling quite uncomfortable. And so it wasn't, it, I, I really enjoyed it, but it wasn't, for a good two thirds of it, wasn't what I expected. <laughs> I was expecting kind of the magic of seeing this almost spiritual poetry that animals can have. Once the cows go out into a green field, and we see them with some color because it's such a dark world inside the barn and so kind of black and white and, and, and blue and cool colors. And then when we go out in the field and it's such a relief to see the green of the field, I, I felt. And there is some poetry there. So she did allow us to see the cow eating the grass. And there's something really compelling about the cow just chewing on the grass and the sound, you know, I, as usual, I had really good headphones on and the, the sound of the, the, I had them on a high volume, listening to this cow chewing grass, you know, just happy as anything, is a really compelling bit of film. I do find that kind of beingness of animals really, um, really compelling. And the other scene I really liked was the, 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 the night scene with the, the cows almost looking up at the stars. I just thought that was magical with the, the sound of the cows breathing. Um, and so, you know, very, very, very effective. So it, it's, it's like, it was a film documenting the industry, but it also included something more poetic. I'm not sure whether they're two different films because actually Gunda, is a film which focuses 99% on the poetry. You know, Gunda is so different than Cows, than Cow. I mean, in a sense, they are very similar films, both with a very similar topic, but Gunda, every shot is perfectly framed and composed. It's in black and white and it's just beautiful. And it just, every shot is poetic, every movement of the animal, um, it's just extraordinary. It's like you're watching poetry. Um, that is much more like the film I was expecting Cow to be, but I think they're both very valid films. There is a twist at the end of Gunda, which I won't, I won't spoil for you because I know you haven't seen that yet. Um, but I, I just thought that, um, you know, they're two, they're two very interesting films that are, that are actually worth seeing alongside each other. I think just also, in terms of, we often watch documentaries where I, and I think we had this last week as well, where I really admire how the documentary maker has the trust of the, the subjects that, he, that they're documenting. And she obviously had the trust of this farm. And given that I do think the film is raising serious ethical questions, I thought it was really honest of the farm maybe maybe they are <laughs> maybe the farm is ready for change but they're saying you know if you want to drink milk this is what you have to have you know it wasn't it didn't shy away from showing you what is involved in 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 the milk industry i mean these cows were not badly treated at all you know that i think they were they were well treated but you know the problem is that their first their existence is is based all around them providing milk. Um, I thought the end was really shocking. I mean, I found when I, I was really, I, I did kind of feel really moved when the music came on at the end. I much more moved than I thought I, I was gonna be because actually the film was so political and so earnest really, rather than poetic that I didn't expect to be as moved as I was, but I found the, that final scene very upsetting. And yeah, you know, we've been on this, on this journey with her. The very final point I'd make is, I do wonder if 90 minutes is too long. Um, you know, Mubi is also showing the three, three of uh, Andrea Arnold's short films and, you know, two of those, Dog and Milk are 10 minutes long. And they're both amazing in how much you feel you've watched at the end of 10 minutes. It's unbelievable. Um, I was really impressed with them. I'd not seen any of Andrea Arnold's work before. And 
you know, it's amazing what she packed into 10 minutes in those two films um, without it feeling, be, you know, being overstuffed. But this, I just felt, was probably a little bit long for what it was trying to do. On the other hand, maybe I wouldn't have been so moved at the end if, if I hadn't have been taken on this quite long 90-minute journey through, you know, Luma's existence. So I was... The film was different than I expected, so it took me a little while to settle into it and enjoy it, but I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was an excellent film. Mm. Well, I felt the same as you did, uh, almost so close that I feel like I'm, I'm sort of going to repeat a lot of the points you make, so I'll, make, I'll keep it brief. Bef before I do, I th this, is a, this is kind of a side point, but it occurs to me that it's interesting because this sort of came up last week. Do you, and perhaps this is a separate conversation, but you have a vision of poetry that seems to preclude violence and realism at all costs. And I, I agree with you, this film is not the film that I thought you were expecting and that I'd sort of been led to expect because of the conversation we had it. It's not Bresson. Mm. But I don't think it's bereft of poetry, nor do I think that it's hard edged realism. Uh, is sort of antithetical to poeticism. I think they're actually woven together quite beautifully here, and they're one and the same thing almost. But as I say, that's kind of a, a, a separate point. I, I would begin with a couple of very small criticisms of the film. The f firstly, I think, so the one thing I've always really liked about Andrea Arnold's films is she has this, this uh, really impressive, intimate filmmaking style, and a... a a stylized aesthetic, which is unusual within the social realist um, sort of stable, if you like, within which she works, and particularly films like Fish Tank and American Honey, she takes that style to, to the working classes or the underclass to really effective, arresting effect. And when this film opened, it felt almost parodic of her own style, because you've got this kind of handheld camera and then it freeze frames with a close-up and the, the title comes up cow next to the cow and it felt a bit a bit jarringly self-conscious there were a couple of other flourishes that also distracted from the film's overarching aesthetic like the film is punctuated with shots of the sky the camera looking up at the moon or a plane going over and this is this is evidence of a human intelligence a human organizing aesthetic, which I felt distracted from the, the really simple stripped back denuded filmmaking style or the, the principle by which this film is composed, which is put a camera at cow level and follow the cow, you know, and don't interrupt with moments that are effectively a human saying, look, isn't the moon nice? We'll look at the moon now. There was, um, the, there was also when the two cows are mating the film exaggerates and emphasizes the fireworks in the background, which I found jarringly silly. <laughs> However, they are, they're tiny, tiny moments and they in no way overbalance what I found an, an astonishingly affecting film. Like you, I was really troubled by it, really profoundly upset by it actually. And you're right that the, the farm on which these cows are held I think probably counts as what you would call ethical farming. I would imagine that their meat products are stamped with all those labels that make me as a consumer feel a bit more comfortable about, you know, eating meat occasionally and I do drink milk and consume dairy and stuff. And this film reminded me that actually the term ethical farming is in many ways a contradiction in terms. Mm. That when you have a human population as large as our own, that consumes meat products, you can only, you know, no matter how good your intentions, sooner or later, you are going to resort to a mechanized form of, of production. And I was reminded of the fact that the collective noun for these animals is livestock. They are living stock. Oh, yeah. That's all they are. And however well they're treated, the film makes very clear that they exist for, you know, consumption. As you say, there, there is uh, there are a couple of births in the film, um, and the the cows' lives are depicted 
in a in a way that really stresses the repetitious nature of it so the cow gives birth and the calf is taken away the cow seems to mourn her child in its own cow-like way but i think that's fairly evident and obvious that there is a kind of mourning going on there the cow seems angry and frustrated and lost um, the, they are docile enough and institutionalized enough that the farmers only need to kind of whistle and gesture their hands to shepherd the cows through the various alleyways and gates to the, the pen where they are milked or to the pen where they sleep. Um, when they're out in the fields, they are sort of brought back in fairly easily. Towards the end of the film, she calves again, and we hear that it's her sixth calf. It's just a snatch of dialogue in the background. So you realize that six times this cow has been through the process of being impregnated when the farmers think it's you know time for her to be impregnated, having, having her own child taken away from her, having her milk stolen every day. And when it got to the to the to one of the final scenes where she's she's being milked and she's looking out over that ring of other cows being milked and we see sort of a POV shot of that ring of cows, yeah. the sense of claustrophobia, repetition, frustration I felt was almost unbearable. And you're right, there are moments when they are let out into the fields and I had this feeling of just like elation, but underscored with a real sense of dread. And I found myself thinking, just leave them alone, you know, just leave these cows alone. Um, and then the ending, you're right, is horribly shocking comes out of nowhere she just gets shot dead and she lays there and i was thinking that it's in, an interesting thing to think about but i felt particularly in that final or that scene where she's she's being milked and i said it was just like horribly claustrophobic i felt like it almost would have been easier to cope with if this was a story about humans and i and i thought well why is what is it about human about animal cruelty that is so disturbing and i think what it is is there's no if it were human there, I could start to rationalize, or I could imagine that the human was rationalizing, that there are stories you can tell about the treatment, whereas the animals don't understand. And there is a look in the cow's eyes, and this is, of course, anthropomorphous, and I am, I'm putting my own feelings into the cow, but I couldn't help but feel there is a look in the cow's eyes, of, like the cow does not understand what is happening to it, but the cow is a prisoner, and it is processed, and it lives a horrible, horrible life. And what we, you know, as, as human beings do to the creatures we share this planet with, however, you know, earnest or whatever that it is, is horrible. It's appalling. And you're right, the film does a fantastic job of stating the obvious, because none of this is news. I knew that. I know that when I appease myself by picking the, you know, organically assured that I know that's not true i know they don't have good lives but i tell myself that that because it it makes life easier for myself you know i can't live in this constant sense of like ethical unease but perhaps we should and it doesn't although it, it does it certainly doesn't oppose uh, a more kind of fact-based documentary style i think it complements it really well you know it's it's helpful and valuable to have those documentaries that tell us the facts about farming and consumption and but you don't need it in fact what this film trusts itself enough to do is show us that all you need to do is point a camera at a cow in captivity and follow her around for a while and you will elicit an almost overwhelming sense of empathy um that's all you have to do and it restores a kind of appropriate level of humanity to the viewer because as I say, this is not news. It's just that everything about farming detaches us from the processes which end up with that thing in a bottle in the fridge. That we forget how much that you know these are animals just as we are. You know, and we're all just on this planet, and we sh just shouldn't be treating us each other the way we do. Um, so I found it incredibly affecting, uh, almost unbearably so and beautiful it really is touched with moments of beauty because i think that's what happens when you follow anyone or anything around when you afford it the respect it deserves and just spend some time with it love occurs and poetry occurs and i you know i think that is interwoven into the film i really do um and last point i was going to make was oh i've forgotten <laughs> it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah that's it i thought it was excellent yeah
Yeah, I think the um, the claustrophobia point is really a good one because the way this film was shot, quite early on, I found myself thinking, oh, why didn't they use a steady cam there? The the camera is often, sh quite, you know, it's it's handheld and it's it's often shaking quite a lot. And but as the film went on, it kind of felt like actually it was appropriate. It gave you a feeling of something of the, you know, the pushing and pulling that happens in this environment. When the cow's in the field, it doesn't bump into anything. Whereas when the cow's in that combined space, it's it's noisy, it's bumping into things. And and I thought by, ho by holding the camera and, and letting the cam, you know, there's a couple of times when the, the cow pushes the camera or the, the mic, you know, it happens two or three times and, you know, I, I in the end I thought, no, this is part of the so so it kind of loses some of the poetic moment. You know, you're right that we, there's probably a whole discussion about what I mean by poetry in film. But um you lose something of the poetic moment by allowing the camera to shake, by allowing it to feel claustrophobic and that you're being knocked around. But I think it perfectly kind of captured the the mood of this film that it it you were supposed to feel uncomfortable watching it, it wasn't so whereas Gunda for 99 percent of the film you are just you know bathed in these beautiful images um you know so they are very different films in 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 that way um <clears throat> yeah I, 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 I would imagine it was a, a practical issue as well. I mean, steady cams are really cumbersome. And this film, it, it genuinely do, did look like they've followed this cow around for like a year. So to just spend a year, they're, they're clearly spending hours and hours and hours just sitting in a barn with a camera on their shoulder, you know? So I would imagine it was just, you know, a practical thing. The, the point I forgot was that it's obviously true that uh, through Arnold's editorial decisions, she crafts an overtly you know, her, her ethics are fairly clear. And that's not just because she is stating the obvious, it's because this is, you know, a, a deliberately composed film and things are put in the sequence they are, things are emphasized and, you know, but it's done subtly enough that it doesn't feel like an overtly political or sort, sort of explicitly didactic film. It's, it's surprisingly subtle in that way because, you know, there's no commentary, there's no title cards telling us how awful this industry is. In fact, there's no opinion stated otherwise than through those editorial decisions. Yeah, and that's what makes it really powerful. And the other yeah. point on the, you're talking about the style, it is really interesting having watched those three shorts that she did, you know, quite early, early work, I think. Um, and thinking about the comparison with them. I mean, clearly she is not in any way presenting this as a whole new area of work because when you think of the title, I mean, she those shorts are called Milk, Wasp and what was Dog, you know? Mm -hmm. So the title Cow, it's like there's, there's such a similarity there that she's clearly linking it to her earlier work. Those three short films, are all about women in really difficult situations. They're about one woman in a very difficult situation, you know, really up against it in, in life, really struggling with particular situations. And so, you know, actually that's really interesting trying to see the comparison because I, I agree with you that stylistically it is quite different than those really kind of socially unsettling films it's a very because it, it's a natural environment but but I do have the feeling that you know the more you digest it and I've only, I've only seen all these films in the last few days but I have a feeling that the more I digest it you do feel like stylistically it's not completely out of sync with what with what she did earlier I've not seen the feature films but I certainly would like to see them because clearly she's a very interesting filmmaker yeah, that's a really interesting point, actually, the thematic comparison, because in fact, Red Road, Fish Tank, American Honey, and she did a really striking adaptation of Wuthering Heights as well. They're all about, you know, 
women in very difficult, challenging circumstances. And one thing, a sort of motif, if you like, that runs through all of her films and is very memorable, is, is sequences that are so close up, you can hear the characters breathing. And of course, that recurs right. in the cow. That's something I remember really strongly, particularly from Fish Tank and Red Rope. Right. Oh, I'm definitely going to look those up. Yeah, do. They're, you know, well worth watching. Really good films. But Cow is definitely highly recommended by both of us. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, and what are we doing next? Next is a film called Wife of a Spy by Kiyoshi Kurosawa. Not right. that one. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to it.